Okay, um, this is going to be talking about uh, SendSpace Drone Runners, a game for Android, a space game that has musical elements. But I'm just documenting for myself what my um, what my studio setup is, my incredible studio. I got this thing called a uh, loop mixer, and it basically has five channels that it can mix together to make a an output and it has an an unattenuated output that goes to the speakers it's an amplified speaker system so it has its own volume control there for last minute adjustment and then it's got this little gain this output gain slider that controls the so-called record output and that guy goes through a an impedance adapter so that it goes from a line level to a microphone level and then through an adapter cable, a splitter cable, it goes into the tablet. So the tablet can record anything that comes out of the mixer. So anything I can mix together, I can send back into the tablet. So specifically that means, so the vocoder inside of SendSpace can record it. So the vocoder can record anything from the mixer. <clears throat> now my headphones, are plugged into the headphone output of the mixer, but it doesn't handle microphones. So the microphone part of my headset, this wire here, <laughs> it actually in my case goes through kind of a long cable path, but basically just goes to the PC. So my microphone on the headset is only heard by the PC. And then if the PC, anything that comes out of the PC, like if I were to like play a YouTube or something, the sound that comes out, the left-right uh, stereo out from the PC just comes and goes to, it's actually, uh, I guess, channel 5 of the mixer. Channel 5 of the mixer. So the PC goes to channel 5 of the mixer. And the, my standard uh, tablet under test, its output goes through a splitter because this is where that microphone comes in to the tablet but the stereo output of the tablet just goes to channel 4 of the mixer. And then sometimes I have a second tablet, often a 7-inch tablet versus a 10-inch tablet for performance checking. And it's audio out. Um, I could put it through another splitter so that it could have a separate microphone input, but I don't. So it effectively doesn't get a microphone input, so it'll, it'll use the microphone that's built into the tablet itself. <clears throat> So this TRS output using just the left and right audio ends up being channel 3 of my mixer. So basically with these five mixer knobs, I can mix together my computer, the first tablet, and the second tablet in any combination. And the mixer is pretty cool. It also has a little stereo stuff so I can move everything back and forth. Each of these lines is a stereo line. And uh, so that gives me a mix, which I hear in the speakers right away if I want to. And I hear in my headphones right away if I want to. And the output can then be attenuated. So you've got the mix level. That could be a loud mix, or it could be a quiet mix if you turn all the knobs down. But where, however loud the mix is, you can adjust it as a group with this knob and then send it on into the vocoder of SendSpace. Uh, if I want to vocode on the 7-inch guy, well, I just talk to it and he listens through his regular microphone, which I can also do from this guy if I just unplug the cable. And notice that um, the tablets each have TRRS connectors. That's because they have stereo out and microphone in, so they need four signals total. And uh, But the PC uh, is old school, and it just has... A TRS output for the stereo out and it, it's actually just a, a TS input I think for the microphone in. And I've become very familiar with all the different kinds of TRS, TRRS adapters and just the thing to remember is that a TRS cable, the cable itself, the connector at the end of the cable itself will short out the ground to the microphone. Um, so if you have a TRS cable anywhere in your line without some splitter that, that, that knows about this, um, it'll, it'll ruin your microphone signal. 
So um, that's why I don't just feed the microphone straight into the mixer. The mixer doesn't do anything with the microphone. The mixer is all TRS, so it, it just... I mean, I could take a microphone signal and stick it on the right uh, on tip and sleeve and then stick it into one of these guys and they could use it as a separate input. And that's a cool thing about this mixer is that uh, they claim you can plug in either a line level thing or a microphone level thing and it'll adapt to the impedance. And this was not expensive. This is really cool. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like. Yeah. Maker Heart. Maker Heart Loop Mixer. I love it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so the other thing, the PC also has a USB output which goes to a hub and then there's a USB to the to each of the tablets has a USB connection. And that's used both for um, charging them, but also allows me to deploy code, uh, you know, the games in space, which I'm developing in Android Studio on the PC and then deploying it to tablets for test purposes. And the tablets are also on Wi-Fi, um, so they get the internet through that, which they use because it's a multiplayer game, they talk to each other over, over that. Over Wi-Fi. Well, over the internet. And let's see, and just for completeness, I have a camera. Hello, camera. And it's looking at, you know, this general X direction. <laughs> and it's got its own built-in microphone, and all it hears is what's in the room. I'm not I'm not feeding any signal into it directly. Um, but then this this sound and video are recorded and go to YouTube magically. Um, so basically, I have to play it out my speakers for you to hear it. So that's pretty much what this picture was leading up to. Um, although technically, I could take this signal and I could plug it into the camera directly if I wanted the camera to directly record the output of the mixer and not have to worry about ambient noise in the room. But then you wouldn't hear my dulcet tones unless I somehow was recording my microphone at the same time using the PC as just a pass-through device so that the microphone would go through the PC and then end up coming in from the PC. Then then you could hear it. Anyway, um, I love my little studio. And I don't even remember how much this costs now, but I'm very satisfied with that purchase. This, uh, there, I've only found one company that sells this adapter cable and and you know it's it's not really complicated it's just a few resistors inside it's basically a step down uh, resistor ladder where they they take the signal from a tap point with a smaller resistor on that side and a larger resistor on that side between uh, you know ground and whatever so this is technically the signal that that goes to the microphone <coughs> it's a little there's something about it all that's a little unreliable, though. Sometimes it just goes into a mode where it won't work, and then after a while it works again. And I think what's actually happening there is the, um, the tablets, they need to know whether or not a microphone is plugged in, but every time you plug in headphones, they have to figure out, well, is he plugged in just headphones, or is he plugged in something that also has a microphone? And the way that is generally determined, I think, here, let's just draw a little picture here. If this is your little uh, headphone connector, oh yeah, I, I draw these. Okay, this is highly amplified. Okay, if this is a tip ring ring sleeve, and these are the newest connectors, and this is what you have in your cell phone, what happens is, these two are the connectors used for the right and left audio audio sometimes it's an in sometimes it's out depending on you know which end of the cable you're on and you would think that this one there's a mechanical edge here by the way first you know there's a there's sort of a large flat area here to get the mechanical alignment just right it used to be that you would plug them in until this plastic part ran into something and that turned out to be a lot less uh, controlled of a measurement Anyway, so now there's a metal bit down here at the, that's part of the same rod, so that it gets good, good alignment. 
And logically, this would be ground. And it always was ground until, you know, fate conspired. So now once you get TRRS, you end up with this guy being ground and this guy being Mike. And I don't know, maybe you could argue. It, it, and I guess inside this connector, I mean, this cable is a shielded cable. It's got to connect to ground. So I guess it probably connects to this pin as opposed to that pin. And this pin is just the microphone. And maybe having more surface area, well, that doesn't matter. Inside the thing you plug it into, it's only making a tiny point of contact. Anyway, that's, that's where ground is. And again, a TRS connector. TRS connector. This is just one piece of metal. So again, you have your right, left, but then this is now ground. So technically you could argue, well, it doesn't really matter at this point, but the thing you're plugging into is probably touching it in this area here. <sighs> anyway, so if you plug an old style kind of thing, like like a, your, a headphone without a, um, without a, a, a microphone on it would look like this likely. And if you plug this into your tablet, you're shorting out, you're shorting the mic input to ground, and that's enough to tell the tablet that, oh, the thing that he just plugged into me, it may be headphones, but it's not a microphone. And so I'll continue using my built-in microphone. I'll continue using my built-in microphone instead of the incoming signal. And if I then pull that out and plug this guy in, he'll say, oh, well, he's grounding the ground pin, but he's not grounding the mic pin. Maybe he's really connected to a mic. So I'll, I'll suppress my internal microphone and I'll use this external microphone instead. But um, that decision seems to be a little bit unreliable. Um, so, but it'll definitely fail if you use just a regular TRS cable. You'll ground out your microphone, no question. Okay, and that's the, uh, that's the end of that story. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, another progress video for Android game Send Space Drone Runners, available in Google Play and uh, for the Kindle Fire HD. Let's be blue. This is a 10 inch Kindle, and I'm not sure if this is a bug or something I stuck in just to make testing easier, but it took me a while to realize it was still there. It's the blue guy that can travel right through barriers. So if you can do that in your copy of the game, I haven't fixed it yet. But it will be fixed in release 1.07. So this is a, well, it's not really a release candidate yet, but it's uh, evocative of what will be in release 1.07. The newest things here, here were the, um, the cording arpeggiator, which probably won't advance until I get my act together on my key signature and time signature. Um, and really, I would like in my sequencer um, to be doing a little bit more stuff here. Actually, one thing that has changed here recently is I'm using colors. So if I if I hold my finger on slot one and then hit the C key. I've bound, and I don't know if you can see that I'm playing FM piano too. I've bound the, the note C to that spot and every time it comes around it plays that. And what's new <laughs> is I now use my uh, note colors uh, to show you. So that's an E And then the other thing that's newish is, um, well, let's pause that, is that um, I've added more keyboard velocity. So before I only had, well, I had four levels of loudness, but one of them was silence. So I had three levels of loudness and 
basically I just use the middle one for everything because I don't have true velocity sensing, right? So you can't hit one quietly or loudly. But the vocoder, when you play an instrument in the real world and have it come in through a microphone, through the vocoder, and get turned into key presses, well, in that environment, I, I can have velocity because I can use, you know, like if you're singing, I can use the loudness with which you sing um, as a velocity measurement. And it hit me that I, you know, my, my pipeline with only two bits allocated to this wasn't wide enough to, um, to capture the minimum of what I needed to, to capture. So I bravely stepped forward and doubled it to four bits. So now I have 16 levels, one of which is silence. Now then I added these two controls here. Um, anyway, so there's now all these different velocity levels and to give you an idea for how loud they are, I'm at 12, so I'll just go down to zero. There's seven, there's four, there's one. So that's my quietest. And I didn't want to, I knew I was going to have less dynamic range than a you know grand piano. But that's pretty quiet compared to, that's 11, and that's 15. And that's when the tablet is set to a little more than halfway. So I, that's capable of getting uncomfortably loud at 15. Anyway, I keep it at 12 right now. Lord, I'm a vocoder. I'm recording some vocoding. Oh, it's going to do something new. Here we go. I'm going to shut up now. Um, you've seen this before, spectral analysis. Note that we are in voice mode, not music mode. And the ultimate goal is going to be to record your voice and send it to the other players. And hopefully you, with flexibility, like to all or just to one or just to one team um, and anti-spam and all that. But this is that, that interplayer speech that I always talk about where I want it to capture the emotional content of the communication, but not the actual words. And so this is my current step in that direction. And basically what I have it set up to do is um, whenever you've got the vocoder turned on in voice mode, it's constantly listening to what's being said. And if it lights up with colors, then that thing is speech. It thinks that that bit is speech. And the, the thing that makes it think it's speech is that it thinks that it, um, it has spectral content. It specifically has a base frequency, which is shown here as the little red line, and harmonics. So the, the first, second, third, fourth harmonics are shown in orange, yellow, the, you know, the coral, colors of our Roy G. Biv uh, numbering scheme that we use for decorating note colors that we do. Oh, yes, here at Synspace Central, we use colors to indicate notes. But we also use them to indicate just numbers, one, two, <laughs> three, four, five. You know, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes we use them to indicate Roman numerals, one through seven. It's just very consistent and nice. So if we think it is that kind of sound, then we encode it into this uh, group of eight numbers, eight small numbers, eight numbers that are six bits storage or less, which I can express as eight characters of text very easily, and then include that in any transmission medium I want, including uh, baking it into your star map file. Anyway, so it just is just recording them right now in these, these groups of numbers. It's coming up with 25 of those a second during the times when it thinks it hears speech. And, um, and it's putting them in a queue. And the idea is that in a multiplayer game, each player, from your perspective, you're the listener, uh, each player, including yourself, has a queue of the last things that they said. So as, as you're listening to one, you're probably not listening to the others. I don't think 
I don't think the sounds overlapping is going to be a good idea for a while. Anyway, so what will happen is each guy's got a cue. So if he's talking while you're actually listening to someone else, then his stuff just piles up in his queue. And then when this guy's done, pump, and maybe there's limits on maximum transmission time and da 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 da, um, then the next queue that's available starts to play. And so you're hearing the message time shifted, but you don't know that necessarily. And uh, I don't know, some sort of squiggly line appears to kind of sell you that uh, he's talking. Anyway, so that's, that's how I see speech is appearing, and then you just hear it. Uh, if I stop talking, after two seconds, he should start talking back everything that he heard, but now converted into alien talking to you over a subspace radio. I don't actually have any way of uh, purging that cue right now. <clears throat> so, um, we'll just let Mr. Alien talk in the background. He'll eventually catch up. Um, but the idea is that would, you know, when you're getting messages from NPCs in your scripted star map adventures, um, they could include short snippets of speech like that, and it would just be a few lines of text. Okay, let's do a test recording, shall we? Hello, this is a test recording. Thank you. Okay. So this, if we play it back in sample, should sound kind of normal. This is a test recording. Thank you. Okay, and then if we play it back in spectral, it should have that bellish. You can kind of make it out. And now, um, I, I love the way these short words end up having a, a very, you know, it's like a graphical language. It's like, oh, these are the letters of alien talk. <clears throat> but this is a good depiction here. So here, this bottom part, like here it went, ee, 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 ee. That's, the, that's the fundamental pitch, and that's what my vocal cords were doing, and I was exaggerating hell to get, to get lots of um, motion there. And then these little curves up above, the little waving flag lines, um, they are literally just the harmonics of that bass frequency. So this second harmonic here, it, it's always the same amount above the fundamental. And the third harmonic is always the same amount, a little less, above the second as the second is above the first. And in places like this, you see them stacked pretty high. We see if we see the fundamental, which is also known as the first harmonic, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. So we see going up there. So that's in times usually where there's a lot of, you know, shh kind of background sound stuff. See if we can figure that out for this. Recorded, recording, record. So I guess it was the in record, recording, something like that. Anyway, um, but this is key to the technology that I'm going to be using, which is um, how do I compress that down into a few enough bytes that I can economically just be splatting them about between the players willy-nilly without worrying about bandwidth. And you might be laughing like, ah, ha, ha, in the 21st century, he speaks of bandwidth issues, which clearly this game does not present a challenge in the domain of. Um, but no, uh, that is true. But still, I want it to just be dirt cheap. And, um, and I want it to be ASCII text. And these are not technical requirements. They're just my requirements. Um, so what I'm doing is 
uh, these little smears here happen uh, 25 times a second. So there's actually 25 columns per second in this display. And don't use the keyboard as a ruler for this display. They're, they're independent. Um, but you can kind of, at this zoom level, you can sort of see the quantization there. You can see how this line looks like it's a bunch of little blocks. Maybe you can see that. Um, that is that is the resolution. So that's 1 25th of a second. And the width of this uh, cursor line is 1 25th of a second. I um, go to some place where I'm saying something. And as you can see here, like in this section here, there's going to be the fundamental, uh, the first, second harmonic, and the third harmonic, and not much else. So when I get there, I see the fundamental, which is red. I see the second harmonic, an octave, which is orange. And I see the, the yellow, which is the third, which is technically a fifth above the octave. Um, and then you could also see a, a fourth, a fifth, no sixth to speak of. And who knows what that is, 7th, 8th, or ninth? A little bit of energy way up high. These lines get closer together. So the distance between these two lines and then the distance between those two lines is closer, and the distance between those two lines is closer, and the distance between those two lines is closer still. So the next one would have to be here, and then the one after that would have to be here, here. So that's at least four above. And chances are this is really just some noise in the background. But anyway, because it had a, a strong fundamental, and a, a second and a third harmonic, um, I said, okay, it's worth considering that this might be voice. Now, in the case of uh, two speakers, you know, it, it has a lot of confusing uh, things to worry about. Um, but in this context, in this in this application, I figure you'll be the you'll be trying to be the loudest and clearest voice. Uh, in your acoustic environment and so therefore it's just it's uh it's within the purview of the performer to worry about that oh so it recorded it because it, it looked like it passed muster whereas this this very next cell here it said oh uh, I didn't see a strong fundamental harmonic relationship anywhere in this this time slice so for this 25th of a second it basically is saying I think that's silence now, it's not silence, and whenever I see this, what I should do is think about it like, oh, is that some sort of a click or a bup or a pop or a, you know, some sound that I should be recreating if my goal is to actually make intelligible speech. But as you will recall, my goal is not to, to make intelligible speech. But still, I should, should do that. It could still be unintelligible even if I did do that. But anyway, so this looks like legitimate speech. So um, let's... let's uh, So that's, was that thank you? I think that was thank you. Let's focus on thank you. And a 25th of a second is, you know, it'd be better if I could do it faster. But you can see that, you know, during this part here, it met all the criteria of harmonic content. And what is that? Thank you. Thank, thank. It's the ain't part of thank you. Whoops. So the n mm part we don't really hear, and the I don't know. I have some rules here I'm still working out. One is um, for the lower frequencies, I demand more harmonics. But if you happen to be singing a high note, uh, just the rules of physics say you can't have as many harmonics as you would be able to have if you sang a lower note. My demanding the presence of those harmonics leads to situations where I don't hear a high sung note. So I don't claim to in, in, if you're really trying to sing, you should be in music mode, probably. But I want people in voice mode to be able to, just like I want them to be able to convey emotions to each other without fear of being understood, um, I want them to be able to sing to each other with, without performance anxiety, you know, the sort of the karaoke effect.
So even in voice mode, I do want to carry at least an octave or two of, of uh, human voice singing range. Okay, another progress video for Android game Sense-based drone runners. And I'm filming it with a Kindle Fire HD 8 inch. And then over here I'm booting up a Kindle Fire HD 7 inch in case I need a second player. Okay, so pretending you just saw the layout of my cool studio. Again, I'm going to just go scattershot through things that changed in the last weekends. And the first one I should point out is these new controls. So we've got a piano and you pick pick your instrument and it's in an octave right and if you've been following along you know that the way you change that is you open this control and then you can pick which octave you want and that's and this then is A4 and this 440 hertz. Um, but redundant to that now, because you don't always have that panel open, but you do maybe want to move your octave around, you just hit minus, and now C3 is the center. Now C2, that's as low as it goes. And it goes up to, goes up to C6, and then past that ear, I'm unable to accurately reproduce you, so I don't let you go any further. And then there's also this new control for velocity, and that's that's how loud. So in a real piano, you can hit the key harder and get a louder note. And here I don't have a, a pressure sensing thing. Um, so what I've got is basically you can pick your velocity, like say you want to be 7, Or maybe you want to be one. And I'm thinking you might usually want to be 12. And then it can go as high as 15. And again, I mean, the exact middle is eight, but that's not exciting enough for me. So I'm, I'm thinking of just for the, for you, for you, what you're playing so that you can hear yours maybe a little bit above other people. 12 is pretty good. And the arpeggiator, it has its own velocity setting. So like I can set the arpeggiator to eight. And now I can play along with it. And I'm I'm not lost in it. If I if it's running at 12, same as me. Um, I'm the same loudness, and you know I fit in. But if but I'm not really the soloist anymore. And if I'm running even lower than that, then I'm not even hearable. Let's say I pretend I said audible. <laughs> and um, anyway, so that's new. And I'm going to pause for a moment. Actually, that would be a good strategy, wouldn't it? To um, practice a demonstration of something and then film it. So we were just talking about the new velocity control and how I like to set it to 12 and then adjust the um, tablet until that's a, a non-embarrassing sound level for where I am. And I want it to match to other sounds that happen in the game. Like, I don't know. So that's, you know, that's loud enough to be embarrassing, but not, not, 
not inexcusably loud for a game. And then the vocoder, if you've got it in music mode and it's recording sound and analyzing, looking for notes and then sending the notes into the sequencer, it also provides a velocity, but it, now it provides a velocity that's based on how, you know, how absolutely loud the note was. So if the note sounded loud in the microphone, then it'll be recorded as if it was at, played at a higher velocity. Um, okay, so what else I want to say? Um, loops. So each groove can hold 15 loops. And each loop is a pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my finger on the slot I want to turn into this new note. And then I'm going to play the note. So that's now a C. And every time the little white square comes around, it'll play a C. Now I'm going to repeat that for the seven letters of the C scale. And we'll go up one more. So you'll see that now, before these would all just have been green, but now their color represents their frequency. So anyway, so that's new. And then the other thing that's new is um, these are all the same amplitude. And since there was 12 when I played into it, these are all 12 things. Like if I want to change it, I could go back down to 6. And then like each, every other one, I could... Uh, I think I did that wrong, but it's more interesting this way. Anyway, so, so, so these ones I just changed are now velocity 6 compared to the velocity 12 of the louder ones. And not only are they not as loud, but they're not as bright. So brightness tracks with loudness, color tracks with pitch. And they're whatever piano, you know, like, so some of these were all piano too. If I pick another instrument, it's like tubular bells. Let's say here I'll hit a tubular bell and it'll be this one. Oh, and I want it to be 15. Oh! See, I, I'm debugging it right now. So 15 turned into 0, it looks like. So how about 14? Okay, so it looks like I have a bug that I, I can't really set it to 15. Maybe I'm off by 1. Um, anyway, got to fix that. So that's what's new there. Um, velocity is now part of the loop stuff. Velocity and octave can be set here. They can be set in the loop engine itself. They can be set in the arpeggiator. They can be set in lots of places. They are stored when you save your groove, when you clone your groove. The velocities are saved along with the rest of the song. And they were there before, I just made it bigger, wider, wider dynamic range. I'm actually going uh, 0.75 decibels per increment here. It's like a 12 decibel range total from the quietest to the loudest. Now, I call that 12 decibels. I think, I think traditionally that would be called 24 decibels. And on a 24 decibel scale, you would compare that to a fancy grand piano might be 50 decibels. So it's it's much smaller dynamic range than 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 the fancy dynamic than a fancy uh, grand piano. But I think it's a good range. You know, it's it's uh, you can hear it. Um, you can still individual notes can still fade out more quietly than that. But this is like the the loud part of the note is this loud. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, so, okay, so let's stop and start a whole new tape. So what else is new? Let's see, in the, in the vocoder. Yes, okay, so here's a new trick. The vocoder, as you recall, can be in music mode for 
grooves when you're in music mode anything it hears in the microphone is turned into notes which go into their own track or go into the current track in a groove and that only happens while you're recording when you've got this thing turned on when the vocoder is actively recording but functionally voice mode is really similar to music mode the only difference is that the array of filters instead of being tuned to all the semitones all the half steps of uh, the musical scale they're tuned to I guess you'd call them quarter steps steps at twice the precision so instead of frequency ratios of the 12th root of 2 its frequency ratios of the 24th root of 2 but every other one is exactly the tone of one of the musical scales so it has all of the exact musical notes plus it has the exactly one quarter tone sharp of each of those notes And again, it's not because it wants to play back quarter tone music, although if you're into that sort of thing, man, yeah, yeah this is the only app that lets you experiment around the edges. Um, but um, no, um, what it's for is so that when I'm recording your voice in the vocoder um, and I'm, I'm auto-tuning you, as it were, I'm snapping you to one of those uh, grid points and then I'm doing all my analysis based on that. But as far as making you sound like a better singer, uh, I'm going to snap you to whichever one I think you're closest to. And if that's the quarter, quarter tone sharp, then you're going to sound quarter tone sharp. And I have an auto-tune button here, which not today exactly, but soon I would imagine, um, will also work in, uh, in this mode. Normally that only works in music mode, but I'm going to make it so in voice mode, you'll still be able to sing and be auto-tuned just snapping you to the closest note, not necessarily to a note that is appropriate for your current key. That would be a different stage of development. Um, and I think I would do that after I do my kind of assistant singer, my co-singer work, which I want to do. I want it to be a peppy little robot that wants to sing, wants to hum, wants to play drums with you wants to listen to what you're doing and then join in and you set the tone you set the lead although you know it's going to be very regular once you set it and so it's going to be really encouraging for you to to play along with it afterwards but if you play slower and slower and the acoustics are done right like you're probably wearing earbuds so it doesn't hear itself um then um it should be able to adapt to you when you slow down when you speed up things like that and it should be able to harmonize with you both you know, in pitch and rhythm. I mean, that would be nice, you know. I think it'd be nice. It's just a karaoke kind of experience kind of thing. And I, I'm not doing karaoke at all. There's no... Yeah, it's not karaoke. Don't sue me, karaoke ink. That's all music mode, which we're most used to. But in voice mode, I've just been waving my hands and saying that this is the underlying technology by which I'm going to emulate alien voices communicating over subspace radio of some sort. So I've got that set up right now that it's kind of a simulation of the use of the technology where once I turn it on, when I talk, I'm broadcasting you know, on the radio. And if, if it hears anything back, it, it plays it. <laughs> so... In theory, this is what it would be like. The portion of the game that involved talking to other people would be something like this. Okay, so notice it's now it's only recording when I'm talking. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Um, no, I really don't understand what you're saying. Are you speaking English?
Well, I, uh, if you know, I'm sorry, I can't understand you because whatever you're speaking, it's just not a language I understand. Oh, and listen to me sounding angry. Oh, oh, I'm filled with anger. Well, maybe I need to work on the anger. Okay, now I'm being calming and gentle. And I don't know what kind of animal would speak like this. I like making my little thing go back and forth. Go to the right and to the left. Go to the right and go to the left. <laughs> So something like that, where basically um, that would be a Vox implementation, but I'm thinking it would usually be a push-to-talk scenario. And I'm thinking um, the way I send my voice is as simple as that, where it's just listening and anything it hears that sounds like a voice um, will be sent. And to whom does it get sent? Well, there has to be some way of controlling that. And that seems easier in a push to talk scenario where if I if I hold down this button can you see that one? Yeah. If I hold down that button for, you know, half a second, it starts transmitting to everyone, blah 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 blah. But if I hold my finger down on this guy's face, uh, right now that opens his panel the same as tapping on it would. But I was thinking making it so if I just long press on him, um, I, I talk, blah, 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 and anything it hears me say is sent to that guy. Um, but anyway, I need some, some nice metaphor for sending to all members of my team, maybe all members of the opposing team, maybe everybody, maybe individuals, maybe just the moderator. Um, so all these different combinations of, of whispering in addition to just simple, I got my finger down and I'm talking. Now, you know, it's not going to guarantee anything, and I guarantee you there's going to be queued data that's going to end up getting routed to the wrong person and embarrassing you, if anybody can understand what's being said. And the point is that it's just supposed to carry fun. I'm going to, maybe I'm going to stop saying carry emotion. Because <laughs> I, I don't know if a shouting match, I mean, it's, I think it's called it a primal scream uh, therapy session, possibly. And I think, I think there's something there, but I think maybe, maybe there's some psychological research to be done to know what's actually best for society. Is it, is it good to get the screaming out, or is it bad to, to pattern and learn how to scream effectively? If you, learn, if you teach yourself to scream at the drop of a hat, then are you going to end up screaming more? Um, or are you going to get it out of your system and end up screaming less? You know, feel less less fed up, and maybe when the screaming is ineffective, maybe it'll also kind of reinforce the concept that screaming is seldom the actual answer. I don't know, but I'm hoping it's it's cool. And if I scream, you know, um, that actually, so what's that sound like? Arr! Excuse me. Well, that was hard on me. I don't actually have it wired in yet to be sending the data. I'm not. Uh, uh, let's just look at the data. Uh, so I need a test sentence. Hello, I am recording a test sentence. So this is. Hello. I am recording a test sentence. I think I may have improved the quality of that since the last time I recorded it. 
Um, but that's my raw samples. Hello, I am recording a past sentence. And I can um, bring in the end here. Hello, I am recording a. Hello, I am recording a. Okay, now looking at this in more detail, here's the cursor. As I step through the thing, I'll turn the volume down. So it, it's doing its best to recreate the signal as it existed during that 1 25th of a second. The width of this little cursor here is 1 25th of a second. This pattern here is the stream of spectrums that went by. And this is a single spectrum, the spectrum at that cursor point. So if I tap on this little guy here and move that cursor along, you can see that the cursor chops one, two, three, four, and five obvious lines in the stop display. And over here you can see it has a red one, one, two, three, four, five. The music display, these colored notes, these colored bars would be things that I thought were notes. But in a voice display, in a voice mode display, um, these colors just represent the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which are Roy G. Biv. Roy. <laughs> Red, orange, yellow, G, green, uh, blue, indigo, violet. Anyway, so basically, my analysis says I, heard, I saw a tone here, a low note in my voice that is at this pitch and that is the second harmonic or one octave up from that pitch that is the third harmonic or three times the frequency of the fundamental the fourth harmonic which is four times the frequency of the fundamental and the thing is when I when I analyze all the stuff I see I look for this relationship is there a base frequency for which exists a second third fourth fifth sixth etc harmonic and of all the possible noise, and this is not very noisy, so this is pretty easy, I figure out, I figure it out, okay? And so for this frame, I figured it out that way. And, and if I feel I figured it out, then I render in color. If I don't feel I found anything like that, then I don't render any colored bars. And so if you don't see any colored bars, then I didn't think that I saw voice in that moment. Now, by voice here, I mean the part of voice that is a... Um, periodic waveform. So the part of voice that's little sounds, little psh, 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 little shows and shows and stuff uh, is not reflected here and not not part of my research at this time. And they're in motion right now, right? It's like they were here and I'm going to go forward in time. Move, they moved to the left in a way that looked reasonable. They moved to the left in a way that doesn't look completely reasonable. You know, like the contribution, like the yellow Got really small right so what was up with that i changed notes and the yellow was small i stayed on the note and the yellow got bigger and the yellow got bigger and then the yellow went away so let's ask ourselves so the yellow getting bigger is this thing right here there's a little there's a little short line there that's only two two cursors long and that's the yellow it's not there it's there for a cursor another cursor and then it's gone. Yeah. So this is the er, and that's the e. Re, re, and then there's the silence before the k of the cording. That's the radio talkback stuff. And the way that'll really work is I'll maintain a separate cue for each pilot. And whenever I do send data, blah, 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 it's just a bunch of numbers, and I'll just send those numbers to that guy, and they'll go into a cue. And then after the fact, I think I'll have something like, if that cue is not empty, 
there'll be like this little chat bubble here. There'll be some icon like that next to the face. And if you tap that, then maybe this central area becomes sort of a list of the last five things the guy said. And uh, just, you know, a button you can tap and then it'll replay uh, that thing. Uh, something like that. And then if you tap on yourself, then you can do the same thing and see the last five things you said. Um, but right now, it's kind of more of a preview mode where um, I'm just hearing back what it thinks I said. So uh, what was I going to talk about after that? Talked about, oh yeah, what the data looks like. So again, we'll get some test data. Honestly, I think you cheated. I'm sure what you did was not fair. Seems to cut off the end a lot. Okay, so let's see. Let's take it. Oh. Honestly, I think you cheated. I'm sure what you did was not fair. Okay, spectral. Format. Okay. So anyway, so again, it's it's only interested in these frames with the colored bars, and and I kind of have to do that. So I'll turn the volume down. Okay, so we're stopped on this particular spectrum, which has these particular colored bars for the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth harmonics. And it's really interesting that the sixth harmonic is so loud when the first harmonic is so quiet. And it goes against your normal feelings of, you know, what you're doing with your voice. But anyway, this is what actually happened. There's this thing called a voice long. And what I do is I, I, I want to turn this entire 25th of a second into a single... 64-bit uh, integer, where I break it into seven 6-bit um, fields and then one 7-bit field. This red bar is the fundamental frequency it thought it saw. This orange bar is the second harmonic of that, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, sixth harmonic. So, And the fact that we've seen them means that I feel that there is sound that is close enough to a human speech that it's worth writing down and then sending to other players so that they can hear it. This 25th of a second is summarized by these eight numbers, where the first number relates to the pitch of the fundamental and is the only pitch information that I include because I just assume that the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh harmonics are exact multiples of the fundamental. Yeah twice the frequency, three times the frequency, four times the frequency. So I don't have to send those frequencies. They're implicit in this one. But what I do have to send a statement of how much energy, how loud was the first harmonic, how loud was the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And for that, I'm doing a, 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 an, an octadecibel. <laughs> So um, 54, you would take 54 and divide it by 8, which would give you, I don't know, something. Let's say it gives you 60. <laughs> and then 10 to the 60th, 10 to the 60 decibels would be 10 to the 6 bells, or it would be 10 to the 6, or it would be 100 million. So a number around 50 ends up being a value of a hundred million. So here, this energy here, the average energy is only 10 million. So 10 million is just 10 to the seventh. So I should get, you know, seven times eight. The eight is just a scaling factor I put in because I have a six bit field. And so going from zero to 63 is my natural integer span. And so I map that onto um, a decibel range. Anyway, so just, and if there's only, you know, a handful of harmonics, then I don't need all these numbers. But right now, I just go ahead and, and do all eight numbers every frame. But there's room for compression there. And then the numbers themselves are similar enough that I could probably, 
you know, just do delta mod compression. I mean, look, if it's 51, 53, 54, 55, that could be 51 followed by plus 2, plus 1, plus 1, minus 4, minus 3, um, which probably be half the, half the size. But in the simplest case, each of these numbers turns into a single character that, that can be typed on a regular keyboard. And a bunch of them in a row represent a second or two of time and um, can be used to make little recordings that you can bake into your star maps because this is a game where you make star maps where people interact with fantasy characters who may in fact talk a little. I demoed this elsewhere, but so this is sort of a test mode of what it would be like to talk to other players in this environment. So, are there any other players out there, possibly aliens living in other parts of the galaxy, who would like to talk back to me in their interesting uh, alien language, which I cannot possibly understand? Wow, you sound like me, kind of. I wonder what sort of person you are. Yeah, let's try the music. Oh. As your voice gets higher, and that's going to make me cough again, the harmonics tend to drop off as your throat gets sort of rounder and your voice becomes more of just a pure sine wave. And so what happens is this, the, the number of harmonics that I can see starts off like a lot at a low note. Oh, but if I do kind of the same note but at a higher frequency, It's really only got one harmonic. What is new? What is new? Um, but if people would be singing together, I think that would be cool. I, I know that's asking a lot for your average space game person to want to be singing at the same time. Yeah, so if I have good automation API between the Lewis script and the music engine, then you could do just about anything. We. <coughs> okay. Did that. But I don't want to get to the point where, oh, and I can edit it, and I can, you know, turn it inside out, and I can do that. Although promoting it, pulling it back into the vocoder, you know, lo reloading it into the vocoder um, so that it looks like this. Because those samples can be used by the synthesizer, right? When you're, when you're creating an instrument, you can, actually, you can actually include those samples as part of the instrument, just to prove that. Oh, oh, I know. Oh. Okay, so now we we get a range. Okay, so that's a range over which it's, it varies a little, but it stays pretty constant. So now we come over here to the synthesizer. And we have, uh, here's a well, one oscillator sound. So we look at its oscillator, and we, instead of being a square wave, we're going to change it to being a, a vocoder wave, and then we're going to long press. And now we've bound the vocoder's current sound 
to this. So if we do play C4, if we play middle C. So we'd want to be able to do that from incoming speech as well. And I don't know if there could be a, a thing to do. Um, So I think I described it well enough, but the idea would be you would you decide that you wanted to take part in this kind of behavior, and at some point you would push the record button in calm mode. Then you'd be in this mode, and you wouldn't necessarily have to have it in front. And if you held the button down, that would be like a push-to-talk signal. Blah, 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 blah. But you could also have it in this Vox mode, where if you just shut up, It sends whatever has accumulated in the meantime. But the point is that you end up with a queue of numbers of your own speech, which you send to various other players, and then they end up with a queue of numbers of your speech, which they've got in a queue bound to you, and there's each person that they see has its own queue. <clears throat> and then the system just automatically plays the queues as they need to be drained, but probably only plays one queue at a time and probably has some rules for who can talk and can you talk while you're listening and you know that kind of stuff and i th uh, you you can't you kind of have to stop when that happens it's hard to keep talking so i might just do that that like anytime you send any of your own speech it may be that there's it's like you say it first and then you have to be quiet and then feeds it back to you and sends it to others at the same time or feeds it back to you and gives you a send button if you approve it and want to send it I don't know but anyway the point is that you have to wait a moment before it starts to send and then you're sort of conditioned to wait and it's not listening you can't it doesn't do any good to talk while it's while it's talking um, so anyway so basically a, a, an automatic mechanism that uh, prevents one person from hogging the microphone um, and like right there, I'm intentionally hogging the microphone because there is no timeout, and so so long as I keep talking, then my cue is what's filling. Okay, and then it just be like that until you turned it off. <laughs> okay, so now it's off, so I can say as much as I want, and it's not going to add anything to the queue. And the behavior of this control. <clears throat> An automatic mechanism that uh, so, prevents a person from hogging the microphone. Um, <laughs> You can see these numbers changing over time. 
to play it back, I just basically have filters tuned to each of the harmonics and an oscillator, a sawtooth running at the... Um, and then and just like that until you send, and then you're sort of conditioned to wait. The other thing that I end up with is all of these decibel values for your particular harmonic distributions. And I don't know, but it's possible that there's a bit of a voice identifier possibility there, a voice fingerprint kind of kind of thing. Certainly enough to tell two speakers apart if they're both talking at the same time, if not to recognize an individual or something. And some high-pitched things um, can get pitch shifted somehow, so that's kind of cool. And I'm, I want to do that on purpose, where somewhere, and maybe it's maybe it's via this page here, um, but somewhere I'll have two or three knobs that let you tune your own alien voice, right? So it's like, I'm going to be measuring your actual uh, fundamental frequency and harmonic uh, spectrum, and that's what the data is, but then at playback time, I can play games on that data. I can alter the you know, either just a fixed offset or um, wobble it in time or whatever, but I can alter the pitch of the fundamental, which will then also alter all the pitches of the harmonics. I could wiggle the harmonics so that they were not perfect harmonics of the fundamental. I don't know what that would sound like, if that would sound good or bad. I can play games like I can swap the numbers so that if, if the original signal had a strong second and fifth harmonic, I could just change that so that it was a strong seventh and fourth harmonic or something like that. Just, you know, do a consistent mapping over the course of that speaker or sentence. But anyway, these could be things that there could be a little control panel where I could just, you know, play with that stuff and talk and listen to it and talk and listen to it and, you know, have fun that way. But then that handful of settings would be a few bits that I would distribute, just like I distribute, um, you know, my picture and my ship and that kind of stuff, so that everybody would have a copy of of my uh, voice font, voice style. And then when when my data came in, it would be played in the context of that style. So if I want to give myself a deeper voice or a squeakier voice or, or whatever, I could do that. And, and that should actually be pretty, pretty solid because at that point you're in the digital realm and anyway, that, that could be pretty good. And I could certainly, even at that point, I could apply um, corrective pitch shifting. So, you know, if, if you needed to be auto-tuned further, even after you've been digitized, um, I can move in the digital domain, I can move you to perfect uh, tones. That actually, that's probably the strong part of this, actually. Um, it's just that the weak parts are weak enough that that may not end up being a skill that, that helps. Um, I guess that's about it. I guess that's about what's new. Thank you. See you in another week or two.